Hey everybody. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the Purple Planet. And uh, what are you guys doing today? Us? Yeah. Well, I was about to take a nap, but apparently... <laughs> <laughs> you can still take a nap. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Here, let's grab this purple planet. Yes, let's sleep on the purple planet. Hey. You guys should introduce yourselves. Some people haven't seen all of you before. Who are you? Okay. What are you well, doing here? How about I'll introduce you. You introduce him. Okay. This is Doug Kovacs, Marcus mm -hmm. Extraordinaire, uh, who painted the amazing cover art behind Harley, as well as many of the amazing purple planet images you will see um, today and other times. Mm -hmm. This is Matt Hildebrand, uh, not related to the Hildebrand Brothers. Um, he is an art director, he does layout, and his general uh, psychiatric support for most of the artists. Uh, we go between, between the writers and the artists. We're not, we're not sure. So we don't stray the world. So we don't stray the world, right? Amen. And this is Joseph Goodman. Uh, he might be the publisher of uh, Goodman Games. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the, the Dark Master behind all day was uh, lost. And uh, I'm Michael Curtis. So they, they found me on the street and uh, they needed to look like I tried to leave him there, but he kept following us all the time. Are you sure we're in a crystal shop? Are you sure we're in a crystal shop in Fairfax? You know, lost power. So, no, no, I'm Michael Curtis. I'm the director of product development for Dungeon Crawl Classics. And uh, we are here to give you a group of money. Yes. <laughs> that looks vaguely like that. But a little bigger, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Jen Brinkman. I am operations manager for Goodman Games, and uh, our teams do everything from provide customer support to pack your boxes. And the lovely person in the other frame would be the illustrious Harley Stroh. Yeah, I'm the reason all our Kickstarters are two weeks late. <laughs> 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 I apparently forgot to click the go button. So <laughs> Thanks for coming out, guys. You get to yeah, see yeah. 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 Now yeah. our project's live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. This is this is Team Chaos. Here. If you ever yeah, wanted to it. see behind the curtain at Goodman Games, this is your opportunity now to see see yeah, how it works. A finely <laughs> a finely oiled machine. Don't forget to push the button. For two buttons, it used to be you clicked it, you said nine and started, so I clicked the button, and then there's a second oh, right. button, um, the confirm button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I blame the technology. Did you start the other project too? Yes, we got, so yeah, I guess that's what we should say. The whole point of the show, folks, is you can support <laughs> Our backer kit for Apparel on the Purple Planet, or Adventures on the Purple Planet, and we're funding DCC on Roll20. So uh, hopefully you can find that because I forgot to copy the URL. So maybe it's somebody looks like that. It's like that. Look at that <laughs> on the internet. Well, Lena is on it. She's dropping links into the chat. So Thanks. we're good at the, the, the we've worked the five backers then. So, All right. So, and one of them is Harley. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, so Harley, tell us about the Purple Planet. You're the guy who wrote it. Right. Well, um, you know, so uh, Purple Planet is a like a swords and planet hex crawl um, in the oh. in the vein of uh, John Carter or, um, you know, Al Muirk. I found the original email where you commissioned it, Joseph, and you're like, we need a skinny module like like, like John Carter from Mars. And so, um, so, so that's where it all started, you know, so it's, wow. a, it's, a, it's a hex crawl where like PCs are cast across the cosmos to uh, to a desolate wasteland you know and inhabited by warring houses um that have you know have been have waged war since time immemorial and in order to escape the purple planet you know uh pcs will have to strive against these warring houses of savage man beasts and these enormous giant death arms that erupt from the wastes and the and 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 really learn to deal with the various you know like flora and 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 fauna on the purple planet um so you know, originally it, it it started out as a as a as a skinny module, um, with Doug's you know like brilliant, brilliant, absolutely you know this is the best cover in RPGs. If you've ever wondered which was the best cover in all RPG publishing, it's 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 Doug's. This this is the cover. Um, hey Harley, I meant to ask you. I was wondering yeah. what's the best cover in RPGs these days. I mean, it's so funny you ask. Okay, because so not only is this a, a dynamic, beautifully illustrated cover that is it 
it not only it also serves as a as a, as a player handout which is absolutely incredible and um so you know on the cover you'll get to see like you know the it, yeah it, it details all the all the 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 the, the beasts on the purple planet and also you know on the other cover it has all the all the all the mushrooms that the pcs can explore and and you know and figure out how to use them um so anyway so that was that was our original impetus but um but you know thanks to you know like the additions of like terry olson and daniel j bishop and tim callahan and edgar johnson you know it, it grew into the into the box set um that, that we finally released and uh Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, um, so yeah, so that was that was the original impetus, you know, for for the Purple Planet. Um, it's you know, it's 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 inspired by like, um, you know, my love of the visuals of like uh, Warlord comics and like, um, you know, Mabius's is um, Arzak. You know, if if ever you're you're, I realize, oh, yeah. you know, your PCs oh. like they. If if we fail to put your PCs on a on a flying pterodon at some point, like that needed to be remedied. So we we solved that with Chessmen to the Purple Planet. Um, <laughs> it's also it's also you know it's inspired by Mabius's you know Dune art. Um, you know just just beautiful beautiful work. Anyways, and so um, hey Harley, which edition of Arzak is that? I, I don't think I've seen that. Was that the French one, or is that? Um, it, yeah, it, it's it's French. I can't read a word of it. I, I have to use like like Google Translate to, to hover over it, and even then, I only get part of it. But that's but that's part of that's and, and that's actually kind of interesting because that's the at least the way I work as a writer. You know, I I, I see these images. You know, they they as Doug will tell you that they hit you at the speed of light, and um, that's what I write about. And so it's it's almost better that um, I can't read French. Because I, you know, I get to impose, you know, all my own ideas on on this on this beautiful art. You know, the same way a judge will look at uh, Doug's cover and be like, "Oh my gosh, this is amazing!" You know, I want to I want to take this aspect of the purple planet. Or and another judge will be like, "Well, you know, I'm I'm really interested in these, you know, these mechanical, you know, nanites and and fallen houses and the technological aspect." And and somebody else is like, "Well, no, I I really like the the, the sword and planetary, you know, like um, like Michael Curtis said, you know, onward dogs, I'm going to lead my my war band to victory." <laughs> um, and so you know the, the the purple planet is 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 large enough to encompass you know all those different judges iterations on 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 what it means to be a, a sword and planet you know hex crawl. That's awesome, Doug. Anything you want to add since we talked about all the things that touch on your world? Um, well, the best cover in the world. So the best cover in the world was based on the other best cover. I know, world, I know, dude. Um, 40K. Which is the original Rogue Trader 40K book where they're all back to back shooting in all directions. That's kind of was the inspiration to have like these overwhelming numbers and then like the band's heroic last band kind of thing, you know. Um, is that, is it Rick Priestley or was that Brian Ansel? Uh, was it John Glenn? It no, it's not John Bunch. Okay. It's yeah, it should know what the best cover in the world is. <laughs> it's gotta be I can't say definitively, but you can look up the first printing of Rogue Trader from 1987. Yeah. Somebody look that up and then put it for me. I'm sure if Chase Reinhardt is watching, he knows uh, or Wayne um Wayne Sider. <laughs> I'll name all the people who know. You have a um, summer lane, uh, you have a summer lane spelling of it. And, <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't always respond as get, uh, most good demons don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what? We did that yeah. quarter of the way. We broke that down. So, okay. 25% so, of the way there. So, talk about part, like, when I was working with Harley originally on Purple Planet, like, he, there were all those ideas communicated to me, which he just said in the words, but then he just sent me a bunch of Rosetta, and, like, paintings that he's like, uh, I think it feels like this, which is like a uh, great, you know, inspiration for me to, I of course can't live up to Frazetta. I especially couldn't 10 years ago, <laughs> but you know, I tried, um, I tried to show, show some passion and um, come up with different things. I think we did, we did a video, 
I don't think it was live at GaryCon um, when we originally did this, and we were all sitting there talking about it. You're right. And somebody asked me, you know, well, how do you do it? And my answer was, I just stand in front of the canvas and, and kind of do this. And then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I move my hands around and pick up some paint, and then, then it's done. So like, you know, because everybody knows artists don't really do any real work. It's, <laughs> it's just magic and anybody, can, it's just a talent we're born with. We don't really work very hard. Um, and, um, you know, so it's just a peek behind the curtain, how easy it is to do art. Um, and it's all that's how writers work. They just bang on the keyboard until the 10,000 monkey makes it. I love it. You know, we have a question in the back and the chat. Um, uh, Dr. Spat Matters, uh, excellent name there, right? Uh, wants to know does the slip does the slip piece pledge include Tome Adventure Volume One? I asked. Uh, ask because they've already bought it when you came. Okay, so I have to tell you a story. This is perfect. Yeah, this is so <laughs> Anybody else in here collect the Prince Valiant comic series from Fantagraphics? Raise your hand. On the internet, raise your hand too. <laughs> yeah. Read it at home. Yes. First of all, Harley and Doug, you were with me when we visited Roswell's house that time. That was like Gary Con 2. That's what turned me on to Prince Valiant. What are you pointing at? I keep talking to you. Okay, all right. So, okay, so. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. that looks great. We should show the internet too. We'll show you guys in a bit. Um, anyway, so uh, it drives me nuts because I buy everyone when it's new because I support my local comic shop or some of you guys visited a Sam shop, Blue Moon Comics, if you're in San Rafael, great shop. So I buy it new to support Sam. And then Fantagraphics, like six months later, comes out with a slipcase edition where you can save 10 bucks, but I already bought all the books, so I don't need the books inside the slipcase. It drives me nuts. So I sent them an email. <laughs> I was like, can I buy just a slipcase? Can you like dump the books out and sell me just a slipcase and they won't do it? So Fantagraphics, if anybody knows anybody at Fantagraphics, tell them they should totally offer just the slipcase because I would buy like all of them because I already bought the books. So for whoever wrote Dr. 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 Smack Matters. So Dr. 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 Smack, first of all, where is your degree from? <laughs> <laughs> so for Dr. Smack Matters, just for you, there is a pledge level of the slipcase in volumes two, three, and four minus volume one for people who bought volume one but want the other stuff because it drives me nuts. I can't do that with my Prince Valiant volumes. So look at the flight shuttles, like scroll down a little bit. You'll see that in there as an option. Um, and if that doesn't work for you, tell me what you need because we can do other versions minus level. Hey, what's up, Brett? Hey, it's Brendan. Hey. This is like Sesame Street. <laughs> Here come our other friends. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so there's a flight level on there, minus volume one. And if you need like another permutation, minus volume one, like messages or something, we'll try to accommodate. Um, and fan graphics, I dare you to do such a thing to your fans, such as myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim Cutter has kind of a follow up question here. Uh, Jim Cutter would like to do a foil cover and an interest in the slip case and uh, Tome Adventure 2 and 3, but the add on that leaves out volume, leaves out Tome Adventure 1, which I already own, comes with number four. So I would end up with two copies of number four, one foil, one not. I've <laughs> <laughs> You put these together. <laughs> Basically, what you do is you get that one and then you put one on your <laughs> no. like Send us an email, maybe, info at goodman-games.com and uh, uh, stake that clear, please. We, all, we also need more entertaining questions. No yes. numbers, um, you know, no very specific things about you. Uh, we're talking about Purple Planet. Right? Yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I have some questions about what are you looking at here. Well, let's, can you um, hold it up? Oh, wait, sorry, Carly, are you trying to say something? Well, I was going to say, Mike, can you tell us uh, how the how the hardcover release is going to differ from what folks may have seen in the box set? I, I, I'm sorry. We, I'm, how, yeah, the, the question is, how is the hardcover release going to differ from the box set, the original box set? Uh, uh, what, is a, what was a box and what is not? It's all of the original material that was in the box set, um, with the exception of the uh, the, the uh, with the judge's screen, because we couldn't put the judge's screen in there. And this time around, we're doing the judge's screen with a heavy, thick cardboard, so you can't put that into. So that's a separate item. 
but it has everything else that was in the original, um, everything that was in the original box and more because. Wait, you had more? But wait, and you had more. Don't answer yet. <laughs> because uh, not only does it include um, the three die cut size adventures, which were really? the Rock Awakens, uh, Sesetic Swordsman of the Purple One, and Sky Masters of the Purple One, but it also couldn't, you know, it, you know somebody should have done a, 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 like a quick show about this at some point. But it, <laughs> it did not. Uh, it also includes a brand new adventure by Harley Strobe, which is called Chessmen of the Purple Planet. And uh, for the first time in English, uh, our, our, our friends over in Germany, System Matters, they have their own zine, they have their own magazine, and they publish an adventure called Invasion, of, Invasion from the Purple Planet, which was originally published in German, which makes sense. But we have we are now translating it into English, so it's the first time it is in English. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. Wait, there's more? <laughs> because, uh, as we have talked about, when the original box set came out, there was the glossography of Yacht. And the, 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 you got an individual page from the glossography of Yacht in uh -huh. each box set. And it was totally randomly determined. So uh -huh. there has been, been a process of people have been trying to accumulate these for years unsuccessfully. Harley and I are convinced that there's a warehouse somewhere who just has a pallet of like unwrapped. Like, Actually, you know what? We found, Jen found, tell me what she found in that random pallet. I found a couple extra boxes. A purple oh, plate in the original. We have three six copies locked up in the warehouse right now. I bet those have the ones you're missing, Jim. Mm -hmm. Too bad you can't open them. <laughs> oh, I physically can, so. <laughs> 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 Cut out the palette issue. We decided we put all of the gloss over here off for the first time it is in the card back up. So, this, this, all of you who have been diligently working for the last 10 years to assemble all this, we've just made all of your efforts useless. So thank you very much for trying to do this and sticking with us this entire time. But if you're if you're backing it now, uh, you'll be able to get that all in the hearts. And as of course, it has an awesome new cover by Doug. And an awesome new back cover. And an awesome new back cover. <laughs> also by Doug. <laughs> and, and if we could fit a third cover in there, they yeah. let it by Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a great question. So now, everything oh, in the book. Everything in the book. Nothing else in the book? Um, there's a table. It's just a chest. How big is it? How big is it? It's like, is it the size of the book? 400 pages? We haven't heard it yet. I don't really think this big. It, it sounds heavy. It sounds big. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not gigantic. Unless you order three other books and put it in a slipcase. Yes. And then you order, of course, the, uh, the, the limited edition DCC covers. One with a faux devil hive cover because it's really hard to catch those real devils. They're just mm -hmm. uh, with a with a with a gold foil demon skull cover. And it's got a rainbow logo. It's a, it's a, it's a cool new foil we selected. Yeah. Yeah. Who did that? John about that. Yes. <laughs> so that we, was a good cover. <laughs> we give Andrew a third cover. I think that was Kovacs. That wasn't done. <laughs> and of course, hey, we're just at the halfway mark. We just wrote twenty minutes. <laughs> Uh, and of course, we have uh, one by uh, Errol Otis. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if anybody knows that name. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it's like, kind, of, kind, of, kind of a wacky style. <laughs> <laughs> He's done with romance covers. You know, <laughs> kind of bridging out. That's, that's actually <laughs> uh, So there's a lot more to talk about on the project, but let's show off this art. So you might have to like pull it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up. So speaking of how they don't know how many pages the book is, mm -hmm. that, that 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 piggyback's right on here. I'm holding up an OM by 14. You like plug it up, plug it up. Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it very good. There you go. Let me turn off the power. Um, <laughs> uh, this this is going to be the spine of the slipcase, and since. We didn't know exactly how wide it was going to be. Did that affect your art at all, Doug? I made it. Yes, it did. I made it. I made it adjustable. I mean, it probably won't include all this part over here, but like I wanted to have a full painting, so I added these kind of figures over here. It probably only goes that wide. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Um, but I made a, a, a flexible piece of art that can accommodate different, uh, 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 you know. 
I get the Schrodinger's answer uh, for dimensions, high, high for dimensions you know, yep. uh, because, you know, the best thing in the world is to start a painting not knowing how big it is. You know, oh, yeah. Um, but that's yeah. okay, because artists don't really work. That's right. I mean, it's so easy. I just, you can just like touch it off, right? Sure. I and mean, then, like, anyway, so yeah. That, so that's what's not holding it. You're also doing super cool cover, right? If I remember correctly. Um, well, the covers, the covers for, for when are done, I I don't have them here. Um, that's right. I meant for the slipcase. Slipcase, yeah. I, I don't have that here. But okay. there, there's, yeah. um, slipcase is going to have two sorceress, elf, demon, something on, on it. And, <laughs> and they're going to be on either side doing. Uh, one of them doing uh, lawful stuff and one of them doing chaos stuff, and um, it'll be up to you which is which, I guess. Um, but it, I think I, I've, I've seen them. I think they're both <laughs> incredible. And if there's any image that I've seen lately, Doug, that deserves to be something else, like a T-shirt or made into other things, these are these are that thing. These are that's cool. They're ridiculous. These are that thing. These are that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm an artist. <laughs> a couple, couple of quick questions yeah. from the chat. Uh, Spawn wants to know can we get two of a pledge level? I think so. Does Patrick allow you to um, two? go ahead? And, I, the official answer to that would be add the amount to your pledge, contact us once the backer kit uh, pledge manager phase hits, and we will set you up. And uh, Al, Al Nick. <laughs> what to know? Do the new Tomes Adventures have anything new in them? Are we safe? We already own the adventures. That's kind of a no and yes. Uh, so, for example, uh, this one has Frozen in Time in it, and the original publication of Frozen in Time didn't have the Forlorn North uh, campaign setting of it, but this is the second printing of Frozen in Time, so it does have it. So, if you have like the original uh, Frozen in Time, then, then it does have new material, but if you have anything more recently than, you know, and years ago, I mean, uh, then it does not. For the most part, these are uh, straight reprints of like at least the second printing. So, so if you want a recent printing of the module, the only thing you do is get a awesome new cover art. So, yeah, have a new cover art and have a new title page. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's the new art. Yeah. Yeah. Stefan is doing new uh, spreads, mm -hmm. table of contents spread artwork for each one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there probably will be other little pieces here or there. But, okay. Yeah. And actually, somebody just reminded us we're in a conference room. The sound is not great, so we need to speak more clearly and a little more slowly. Yeah. Sorry, folks. Where is the microphone in here? Over there. Okay. So they heard me over there. Okay. Oh, okay. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was the dice. I actually left the samples in my car, but it wouldn't matter because they'd be this tiny. But if you go to the project page, we have four sets of dice for this project that are all customized. Um, that's no, okay. Like it won't show up in the scale anyway. But um, on the project page, you can see them. They're super cool. We originally were going to do one or two. Then we got the samples back, and they're amazing. Um, I wish you could see them in person. There's good photos on the the, the yeah, project they're, 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 Elena's on it. Oh, Elena, excellent. They're on the Twitch. Yeah. Good. So we have the green stone shards, which are have little sparkles in them and reflect in the light. They look, they look even cooler in like you know sunlight. Um, Tom, who's our dice guy, we wanted. Uh, more sparkle, which is a very technical term. <laughs> so I have samples in my car of the two more sparkle versions. So uh, anyway, so it'll be slightly more sparkly than the version you see, um, but otherwise very close. The other three will look exactly what you see. The rusted Death Hulk, which has that rusty, sparkly look, which That's is all people. <laughs> Death Hulk, yeah, That's just like a Death Hulk. Oh, too many <laughs> what's, your, what's your name now? <laughs> Green sparkles. <laughs> I don't want to ask. More sparkly. <laughs> more, sparkly. more sparkly, Matt. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then we have the uh, uh, weirdling, uh, weird, weirdling, weirdling bone. The weirdling bone fragments. I believe that was it. Mm. Um, which is Harley's idea, you know, that when things die under the weirdling sun, those fragments eventually take on a weird hue. Um, and then the bloody kith horde, which is would be a regular die, but then the paint factory or the dice factory basically splatters bloody paint over the dice, so it has this sort of deathly feel. Anyway, they're super cool. They're all available as add-ons um, and in some of the pledge levels. And we are 
less than 800 bucks away from hitting three quarters of the mark. So nice. we're all we're great. Put the lighter on. We're over 10% on the roll 20. <laughs> oh, great. That's excellent. Yeah, good reminder. We're also crowdfunding DCC for roll 20. If you're a DCC fan who loves to use roll 20 during the pandemic, a lot of folks discovered that um, and kind of cobbled it together. And now we're doing an official adaptation. So that's like the core book is built into the, the system. How, how does that work? Because I'm not familiar with roll 20. So yeah, they, they built great question. Great question, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> great question, Sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More so they go out a character sheet essentially, okay. and then they, oh, I'm blanking on the word. What's the word they used in Roll 20 for the rule book? It's uh, not fully set. Uh, I'm looking at Chris. Uh, it's the character mancer. That's one of the stretch goals. Okay. Yeah. We're building out the that character sheet ties in, yeah. and the rule set, which they have a special word, which I'm forgetting. Okay. But essentially, all the rules, you know, luck, uh, Fumbles, mighty deeds, uh, spells, spell burns, spells, crits. Yeah, it's all going to be integrated directly into all of this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. should be super cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, we have somebody else uh, came in, and uh, we we kind of already read this, but I'm just looking at it. Uh, Blue says uh, on Facebook they have about three friends who complain no pledge letter that has all of the TOAs without TOA number one because no one's had already. Uh, somebody think about before forty hours is up. So. Right, I'm going to say it back just a little slower and clearer. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like somebody wants a pledge level that has minus Tome of Adventure number one as an option. So we can go back. We have that as just the TOAs. We'll go back and add a version of the the everything in, which I'm interpreting this question. So everything in minus Tome of Adventure number one, which I yeah. think is the question. Uh, yeah. We could also make a an add-on just for that. Well, then they don't get the, if there's like deal pricing. So they want the real pricing, which makes sense to me. So we'll add that in. Good question. Why don't we, Harley and Doug, can you tell everybody about the Doom Quest of Delial? I'm going to say Crew. Crew, yeah. 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 Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. Well, you want to start it, guys? Do you want to start this? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do my best to speak slowly, but I'm so stupid excited about the seventh Doom Quest of Delisle Crew. <laughs> like, like my, oh. my, my brain is about going to explode. So um, this is a project that Doug and I have been working on for about a year now. And um, Delisle Croom is this sorcerer who has a young man, you know, his first experience of magic is he sees this this horrific visage of an of an old man, you know, twisted by corruption, who is who is coming to kill Delisle Croom, and so Delisle Croom spends his entire life um, trying to escape, you know, this vision, and then realizes, you know, when he gets to Punjar, that what he needs to do is 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 find Delisle Croom, confront him, and 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 uh, and that that and thereby escape his doom. Um, and so this is this is Delisle Croom's journal of his of his efforts to, um, con you know, his, his doom quest, you know, to confront the specter of his youth. And and it is copiously illustrated by by Doug Kovacs. And so um, you see all of Delisle Croom's DK's illustrations inside um, inside this 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 workbook that he's 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 seeing you know he's seeing the kith and and recording them and 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 you know talking about you know what the kith smell like and and he encounters ascended masters and he's you know recording strange kith rituals that he observes all in on his quest you know across the purple planet and so it's this it's a visual atlas um illustrated by doug with 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 text by me with with you know game text explaining everything by me you know the original text by Delisle Croom as he as he's you know progressing across the purple planet and it's just like literally one of the coolest things i've ever had the opportunity to work on and um you know so to to have to have Doug Kovacs illustrating it um is really a dream come true. And then to have, you know, just the opportunity to really lean into the purple planet. And you know, like, you look at that kith, right? And it's like, what? Oh, wait, you see that mouth. And what does that mouth smell like? Like, you know, really give details about the purple planet that can be, you know, of use to a judge or a player. Um, 
all woven into you know this 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 tapestry of Delisle Croom as he is attempting to uh, complete his doom quest. Can't see these pencils that well. But... Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I'm so stoked. It's it's absolutely wonderful. Um, it's been a huge gift to to meet with you know, like you know one of the, one of the best the, when when we did Sailors on the Starless Sea, Doug and I, you know, we had the time to bounce things back and forth for quite a while. You know, before before you know, DCC RPG finally launched, and this is akin to that, and that Doug and I have had the opportunity to to bounce ideas back and forth about you know what people are encountering on the Purple Planet, what what Delisle Croom's encountering, and um, and really just just go a little bit more slowly, lean in a little bit more, and and produce something that. I'm incredibly proud of, and I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with Doug and creating it. That's awesome. It, it's so cool. I, it's it's like it's the coolest thing. It, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's the coolest thing. <laughs> so yeah, we we've been working on it for years, like a year, something like that. Yeah. And cool process because I'm doing drawings and giving them to Harley. And he's thinking about it, writing something, giving it back to me, and then I'm doing more drawings, and it's kind of like this back and forth where we're kind of having uh, a parallel journey in the creation to the journey we're trying to depict of uh, Lyle Croom. And there's um, the here's a secret. Um, What's the secret? The Lyle Croom. <laughs> isn't real <laughs> and, and neither is is the purple planet so all bets are off you could see anything you know and you could actually take this material yourself and change things to fit your game and make up whatever you want. We don't do that around here, Doug. We yeah. like strictly. I know it's a crazy idea. It's a crazy <laughs> idea, but like you could even give Kith, uh, Kith, Kith our. Can we tell what Kith are? No, we didn't. For new people, Kith are uh, are the descendants of the ascended masters who are the um, the rulers of the purple planet who kind of have technology and magic and stuff and are the beautiful people and the kith are the descendant in the barbarity so they're like your neanderthal orc kind of things so anyway what was my point the kith, oh, yeah. you can uh you can you can make the kith have like great dental hygiene in your game if you want <laughs> despite the fact that i've depicted them as having all these these crazy teeth that's actually how you know whether it's a real kith or not. Is, Check their is, teeth? Yeah, they, the teeth make no sense. Like, they have wisdom teeth? They, I mean, if they don't have like significant various nuance halitosi, um, <laughs> then they're probably not kith. That, that's probably a way they communicate. Did we put that in there? Like they spell each other's breath to, to oh, it's kind of like a reverse uh, dog. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Except no limitations>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it's 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 you know the best the most beautiful thing about role playing games is when we get to share stuff with each other. People take something that Doug's created or I've created and does something different with it, um, and put their own spin on it. Which which segues really nicely into the 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 Kith horde, right? I mean, the horde of the purple planet, because like yeah, you, you've taken this opportunity to like open it up to all these other publishers to like make the purple planet theirs. So if you guys look at the Goodman Games Purple Planet Project and pledge for it, you may already be there. Scroll down that page a little bit, and you'll find a section about the horde. And as you know, we have a free license to publish supporting products for DCCRPG, and there's many many publishers who have taken that opportunity. And we're working with uh, seven of them to have them uh, publish their own adventures on the Purple Planet. So it's sort of their perspective on the Purple Planet with their adventure or their, you know, their hex encounters or whatever it might be. Um, there's actually Roll Funky Dice, which is a, a dice generator for online play. So if you look at our project, scroll down a bit until you find that section, click the links. And we have stretch goals for pledging for more than one project. So if you support at least three of these projects, you get 3D6. Um, in the sparkly pattern made famous by Dr. Sparkles. <laughs> Most likely, we're still working on the dice. 
but it'll be three custom D6 for those who back three or more projects. Um, and then there's a list of other stretch goals, which you'll find on the page that are basically around supporting not a certain amount of the Goodman Games project, which has its own stretch goals, but are based around supporting a number of other projects. Uh, Studio Nine's 101 Hicks Encounters on the Purple Planet and Dark Robot has already funded. Awesome. So, so Studio Nine's Purple Planet project is already funded. And, and there's a stretch goal also if all of them fund, get something, which I'm forgetting what it was. But basically, there's a lot of stretch goals around the idea of all of these projects working together. If I recall correctly, all of them fund. That's the uh, the Rudik inspired uh, additional material. That's right. Yeah. Um, yes. so, that, so they have the original Purple Planet. There is a, in order in order to activate some of the, the relics which are found on this Purple Planet, there's like a room combination for each one. It's kind of like, uh, you know, playing Simon back in the day. So, uh, so yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so uh, all the different, all the different campaigns, they're doing something inspired by that, whether it's the lore of those rooms or, you know, something about it. So everybody's very bringing their own creative approach to it. Should we give a shout out to all of the third party yeah, great call. board okay. members here? All right. From Studio Nine Games, already funded, we have Die Robot, which is a DCC funnel set on Purple Planet. From Horse Shark Games, we have River of Lies. I believe that's James Pozenel. He's almost there. Push him over. Uh, we've got Oh Happy Dagger from Gaming Honors. You're roughly halfway there. Um, let's see, Wrath of the Orb Men from our friends over at Purple Sorcerer. I haven't seen anything from them in a while. Uh, they're almost halfway there. Random Acts of Violet. I love that title. Uh, this is from uh, High Dive Games or Tim Satley. And Come on, got to show all of them some love if you want those extra uh, runic explanations, right? Uh, Memories of the Purple Planet from Rarigan Games, that would be Ed Stanek. And one of my favorites that have come up, uh, our friend Johnny over at Roll Funky Dice. He's got a backer kit here to improve the core infrastructure, and they want to be able to do things like create the account management so that you can save your character sheets in in addition to uh, just having that DCC roller available for your online games. Uh, of course, this would, you know, in addition to things like World 20. If you're just using Zoom like I am, this is a really great resource. And that's rollfunkydice.com. The core functionality already exists and he's adding additional functionality to this project. Yes. Yeah. And like an initiative tracker, and I, I'm actually still stuck on the uh, being able to save your character sheets because even for in-person games, how many times have you shown up at your friend's house? But man, I can't believe I left my character sheet like on the kitchen table or something. <laughs> so I think it's pretty cool. It is cool. Right. So there's, a question, there's a question in there. Um, I it, it may be on the user end. Uh, the, the two people have said is that uh, should the should the pricing on the slipcase version be the same uh, or it should be the same without volume one is in the same as with volume one? The answer to that is no. And I'm seeing, and listening on the add-ons, I'm seeing a difference between the two prices here. So uh, if, if that is coming up when you're adding the add-on, that's something we'll look into. But, um, so we'll double check the pricing. The pricing of the four with the slipcase minus volume one is actually slightly higher than just the cost of removing volume one, mostly because Jim's team, the warehouse team, has to go in and manually process each one of those to bust the shrew craft, take out volume one, et cetera. So there's essentially a small labor charge for that. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we actually we pay our employees, which, you know. <laughs> so, so we have, I know. Don't tell anybody. Nobody <laughs> tell these guys. The campers just need coffee for inspiration. Yes. <laughs> so it's not the same as, it's slightly more, honestly, five or ten dollars and just take down number one, but still, it's better than fan graphics. So, uh, <laughs> so, is there another question, Mike? Um, no, but we are less than two hundred dollars away from funding. Awesome, that's okay. great. Somebody out there could put us over the edge if they want to say it's a slipcase, but all four editions in it. You know, we'll <laughs> double check the pricing. Whoever asked. I got another visual that I just oh, yeah. realized I had that I did something for James Posnell's horse shark. What was it called? River of River of Life. And we have one. River yeah. of Life. Thank you. Yeah, I'll show you the River of Lies. 
There's the, a cat bathing in the river of lies. <laughs> I love that you get some of those are in all, you know, so many of the different products. I, I think that one, has that, some, uh, that one has a Stefan Pog cover, I believe. Uh, the horse shark. Um, is, I, so I upgraded my operating system on my computer, and in Zoom, if you do funny look, I don't know if some of you guys noticed a little thumbs up bubble that came out of my head a while ago. Um, but if you do little hand motions, it actually like yeah, makes it happen. Do it in the video. Yeah, yeah, no, watch this. Be amazing. Um, <laughs> we're we're right, sorry, yeah. Elena. We're not crazy. Yeah, uh, Doug's gonna flip us off. Let's we'll see what that does. <laughs> that doesn't do anything. Don't try it. <laughs> so, God darn it. It, 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 it worked earlier. Anyway, I think it's the white background that screwed me up. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's Brendan trying to hide. We can't hide anymore. <laughs> Whoa, Sorry. I'm <laughs> if you're wondering why we're in person and Harley's not here, uh, we're having our annual staff retreat, and unfortunately, Harley wasn't able to make it due to some last minute circumstances. So um, we did invite him. <laughs> <laughs> All the cool kids are in California. So Harley will be here in two weeks. Yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so so Mike, if the if the Purple Planet funds, is there anything cool that's gonna ha happen to the book? Like uh any can we booger glue a poster map into it or anything like that? Like what's what do we have in store? I think he's going to get stretch goals. Yes, I think so too. Uh, no, we don't have any stretch goals. No, no. <laughs> uh, we can end up for a little more. We do have, they do have a couple of stretch goals here. Um, so if we scroll down, try to get achievement stat. For those of you who are back with their functionality, we're slightly different. So if you go to the community tab and then click achievements. Yeah, yeah. so we go. All right, so actually, we're on, we're on the way there. So uh, if we hit sixty thousand, uh, we are going to add. And we're actually we didn't even mention. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, we didn't yeah. even mention that. So um, it, it's, a, it's kind of much more subdued with backer kit than it was with Kickstarter. Everybody who backs within the next first forty eight hours, all the early backers get automatically gets a free new relic designed by Mr. Harlan Stro. So you're getting a bonus material right off the bat. Um, and then if we hit sixty thousand, there's going to be another new relic. Uh, and that will be available to every anybody who, as long as we get that 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 funny mark uh, when they come in, that will also be designed by Harley Stroh. <laughs> so, um, and start then, writing now. Do it in two weeks. <laughs> no. At the eighty thousand, at the eighty thousand mark, uh, we we're going to be adding a new monster, much like the covers, designed by one person. And that person is Arlie Stroh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then we'll kind of see where we're going from there. So, you know, we've got we've got stuff in mind. Uh, you know, between that, we we already have plenty of the add-ons uh, up available. Um, have we talked about the Plexi disc yet? No, we need to. No, we're not. So, yeah. So, we just did something super cool last night, and I got to meet Levi Nunez for the first time. Um, actually, Harley, I feel like you should introduce. Uh, Luke the body and Levi, just because you introduced me to them, so maybe you can. Well, you know, it's it's actually really cool. Like, like, like the the cool people in Goodman Games tend to find us. Like Matt Hildebrand, it was actually was it Purple Planet? I think it was. he reached it was, out. It was oh, was it Purple Planet? Planet? It's like your anniversary. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. it's time to give you a free coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> like two years ago, the games. So a bajillion yeah. years ago, when we did Purple Planet the first time, Matt was like. Hey Harley, I'm a big fan. Your video sucks. Can I redo it for you? And <laughs> and that's that's how we met Matt Hildebrand. And uh and and Levi oh, wow. reached out the same way. He uh he um he wrote he wrote a song for DCC 100 and then did one for for Sailors and then um and then he did he's doing a flexi disc now for uh or rather Luther Body is doing a flexi disc uh for Purple Planet. And like like it, and I mean, it, it's just fun that people that are, are passionate about what they want to do, they like they see this and like, oh, sweet, how can I help out? And I, I'm, it's it's so wonderful that we're a group of people, a company, if you will, that, that's like, yeah, sweet, you know, like, come on, what can you do? And Matt's like, well, I can make your video not look like trash. And Levi's like, here, let me give you guys some music. And then, and now, and now here we are. And our videos look way better. 
Right. So, <laughs> <sometimes>. <laughs> I, I have a question. So actually, somebody left a comment in the community section on the back of it, and I think it's worth uh, addressing. Uh, somebody wanted to know what is included in DCC number 107. Um, which is a uh, forgotten, forgotten dangers. Forgotten dangers. Yeah. So forgotten titles. Forgotten titles. But also forgotten have, forgotten kind of fun. So, uh, so much as, as we did with Chaos Rising uh, some years ago, we took uh, some of the, the shorter adventures that have been you know, only available through you know, through, you know, not not through. They're basically out of print. It was stuff yeah. that was in like the second printing of the core rule book or pre RPG day from like nine years ago. And it's long gone. Right. Yeah. So, so we're doing the same thing for uh, Forgotten Dangers. Uh, DCC 107, it collects some of the stuff which has appeared in the Quick Start rules, uh, some of the stuff which has appeared in the old and other versions of DCC. Um, I know, like, I think Abbott in the Woods is in there. I, um, uh, Noel, Noel's house is in there. Um, Actually, you're. you're I can sorry. write. Uh, well, the cover is an image from Abbott in the Woods, which is mm -hmm. how it's. It was an adventure in the core book at a time. In the fourth printing. Uh, fourth printing, yeah. yeah. No house, I remember I'd run that. That's a good adventure that much. But I think it was in a free RPG again mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. 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 Go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, it's it's the stuff that you haven't been able to get for a while. Uh, so that have been printed, you know, the, we, did, we thought about including some of the stuff that we did for the Gen Con uh, programs. Oh, we actually made a list of what's in there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> And for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, it'd be really easy to just reprint the book straight up, but we try to make our lives hard by never doing that. So we frequently swap out the adventure in the back of the core rule book. The quick start rules, actually, if you, nobody collects the quick start rules except for probably Jim Scott. That, that, is, that is absolutely not true. Oh, people, okay. So maybe people notice this. We swap out the spells in the quick start rules. So if you buy the quick start rules or download them, what's on there right now might be different from two years ago because there's a lot of spells. So we try to rotate them in and out. And adventures sometimes the back coming out. So we have this archive of adventures that were, you know, once available and are now out of print. And that's basically what this this volume collects. Um, and a lot of people have asked us to reprint them because some of them are just, not some of them, all of them are outstanding adventures. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the best. Except for that one. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so what is the list? Oh, so, yeah. Um, I don't have that secret code. So that's okay. Well, now we know how to get it in your phone. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Noel House, GS of the Star Cons. These are both from uh, Quick Star Rules from 2019 and 2017. Yes, yeah. 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 What was what was the one yesterday that we were arguing about the pronunciation of? Um, Boulette, yeah, B U L E T T E, the critter from is that from the Boulette. Oh, wait, uh, I gotta make it. All right, Brendan, you're visible. You can now make your point. Boulette. No, it's obviously. I was the price of admission right there, folks. Yeah, I know. Anyway, it's the GS of the Star Ponds. <laughs> and Legend of the Silver Skull, which was also from the Quick Star Rules. Man Bait for the Soul Stealer, also from the Quick Star Rules. This is like our run of all the Quick Star Rules. That was actually um, my nickname in high school. I don't know if you do that. Before that, yeah, Dr. Sparks. Yeah, Spartan. well, it's, yeah, I'm much better in school than that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. How are you guys going to pronounce this one? Y D D G R R L's Maze. Interesting. <laughs> Who wrote it? <laughs> How do you say that? Uh, I don't mean, we came up with age reveals. You came up with it. <laughs> yeah, you did it. Somebody came up with that. That's in the DCC rule book. Yeah, it's not. Nice. You read it sometimes. <laughs> 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 you just took it out of the book. But wait, who wrote it? It's Gaelic. There's one out of the decoration. I wrote, 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 wrote age reveals maze with the help of Henry Hurst, uh, my nephew. Nice. Because yeah. he was well, like, Thank you. How does Henry think of pronounce? <laughs> and just for those of you watching from OSHA, Henry is over 16 and totally legal. <laughs> okay, I gave him 20 bucks on a copy of the argument. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to work at the comic store, which was my first job. I got paid $10 a day, $5 in cash, $5 in store credit. <laughs> that stuff was like the best thing yeah. ever. <laughs> All right, and then the last one is Abbott in the Woods. I'm sorry, Abbott of the Woods. Yeah, um, also from the Cold War. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. 
And then we have, I feel like there was something else we're supposed to talk about. What was the other add on? Uh, the other add on? Wasn't there like another add on we're supposed to mention? Uh, we, we sort of talked about the judges' screen. We sort of talked about the players' handbook and players' hand up. We got it all. Right. Sure. Uh, how many books will the slipcase hold? Is it just for uh, the terms of adventure, or yes. does it include space for Purple Planet? Uh, yeah. so, uh, that, uh, yeah, good. yeah uh, Purple Planet is uh, is home of adventure number four, so it will hold four tomes of adventure. So one, two, three, four. So yes, it's right. under covers. Its legal name is Tome of Adventure Four: The Purple Planet, mm -hmm. but all its friends call it. Purple Dr. Sparkle's plan. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, if you have a slipcase, you can put anything in it. You can fill it up with, with flotting money. So, you, you told, mm -hmm. so on that note, I also want to email Fan Graphics. <laughs> <laughs> I, they told me they couldn't ship empty slipcases. I'm like, I own a publishing company. I have slips empty slipcases. The technology exists. Yeah, yeah, it's called like paper filler. Right yeah. <laughs> so anyway. So if you guys want extra slipcases, we will accommodate you. Just make yep, a request please. and we will add that. <laughs> and this one is really, uh, Doug, exactly what were the dimensions of that slipcase <laughs> bond? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's really, yeah, 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 yeah. Hard covers. There's, there's an answer to most questions. <laughs> and that question, that answer is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really big, it'll be for hardcover. So to Matt's point, you can throw a lot of like skinny modules or whatever in there. Um, so if people want that, we you're, you're definitely allowed to put whatever you want into it. We already did that once. We made one that you put whatever you wanted to, mm -hmm. right? So there's no rule against that. Yeah, the, we, we didn't make, we didn't hire a police force to enforce a rule. But <laughs> 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 you, you can't put whatever you want in. We just didn't think it was economical. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eventually, we'll have a subcase for the additional sums of adventure as those so we'll as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Since one was let's see. We did have a question from Black Belt Troy, and he is Black Belt, so we want to answer this one. Oh, uh, he's he, not he, he was, he, yeah, <laughs> he's not a doctor, he's Black Belt. Um, he might be Dr. Black, but I don't know. But he, uh, he or she, or they wanted to know if the uh, if the concern that if they go for the slipcase version, which, which only has the three books, that that might cause an issue during shipping, like something could get crushed or something like that. So, that is a wonderful question, um, because that's what fanographics couldn't do. But what we do here at Gummy Games, <laughs> it's called filler, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we have this whole thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and if you since we have to bust that open and take out volume one, if you have other stuff in that order too, we'll that's fill, a great call. fill the void, right? Yeah, but even if we don't, we actually we believe in sustainability. So quick side note, we are printing our books on FSC certified paper, which means the paper does not come from indigenous forests. It's like a Christmas tree farm. They like grow the trees and chop them down and grow some more. So it's all like sustainably harvested. Um, but also in the warehouse, we shoot for sustainability. So Jen, does a phenomenal job of saving all the old cardboard. Um, to a fault. To a fault. <laughs> Giant piles of cardboard everywhere. It's dangerous. <laughs> no, not anymore. You buy one of those like paint the best, so we clean. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I showed up and they were like, oh, we're totally going to clean this up. Uh, <laughs> the point is, we have lots of spare cardboard and we can just stuff that as filler inside to make sure the slipcase doesn't get fucked. I know it's not you know, as pretty as having, I don't know. Official uh, cardboard or official like styrofoam peanuts with yeah. our logo on or something <laughs> that we're reusing and yeah. reducing and recycling all that stuff. Repurposing, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, great bait with the name sounds familiar. Yeah. I, I've heard of that guy. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Hey. Uh, great what are you doing up at this hour, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> uh, great bait wanted to know is, uh, uh, are the exclusive card covers, uh, uh, are they only going to be available through the campaign? Uh, no. What we might so they will be available elsewhere as well. What we what I'd like to do is do like a foil uh you know accent of some kind, and sometimes we do those specific to the Kickstarter. Honestly, I haven't decided yet. Um, but you will be able to buy these. Let me just before I um actually will the do quest of Delio Croon be available later on? That's the one that I'm not sure of. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, we're gonna whatever amount that people add on, we'll make that amount, and then. We'll make it available later. So um, it'll be probably available through Hobonomicon.com. I'll give some to you. 
maybe space pregnant or exalted female or something like that. But, okay. um, yeah, it won't give us a lot of place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> give you a lot? Yes. We, uh, we, we have like big open on the shelf in the, in the warehouse now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's all, if anyone's familiar with the thing I do myself without any oversight from Joe to tell me not to make all the bad decisions. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I published a thing called the Homonomicon and it all started with a uh, zine called Inferno Road. But anyway, I'm following that process if you're familiar with it. You can buy that at the thing. Thing. <laughs> Or yeah, yeah you can buy different places. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the basic one probably. Yeah. Picture yeah. if you're watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a, a long way of saying yes, it'll be available <laughs> afterwards, but uh, may not have like the full accents or stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Support Doug and Harley making more cool stuff like this. Buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> buy it now, buy it often. <laughs> exactly. In, in answer to Sketch, the special covers on the core won't be limited to the crowdfunding. Sketch, do you remember the seventh printing? We had like the Shanna cover and San Julian debut. They did the foil covers. I guess Joe did the foil uh, titles on those and then later sold them retail without that foil cover. But it was still technically the seven, 7.5 printing maybe. But then the reissue had different foil on them. So don't worry. I'm sure there will be like five varieties for you to Actually, my guts. This is just for Sketch. Everybody else don't have to pay attention. But Sketch, this was just for you. So it was the, I want to say, 10th or 11th printing where we actually printed some versions of the Arrow Lotus in this new sort of rainbow golden double height edition. And then I realized, and, and I added them on the printing, and I didn't add enough. So we actually are going to send back the 12th printing soon, mm -hmm. and that will have these added on as well. Okay. When I say add on, you print the blue cover, then you add on these to the print run. So what that means there are technically going to be two printings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the back near the barcode, one of them will say, I think 12th printing, and one will say, I think it was the 10th, 10th printing. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, Jim, we have no way to distinguish between them because they have the same skew and same barcode. But if you were to buy 20 or 30, <laughs> odds would be good. You could probably get both. No, but for Sketch, yeah. I think the Chaos Lords would actually. We could do a special. Look at the, yeah. 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 the 10th or 12th printing. Yeah. For some instance, some of the Chaos Lord. Um, <laughs> Send us coffee. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, do it. <laughs> we'll do a lot for coffee, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got like three minutes left on the live stream, something yeah. like that. And we are at 51,000, so we are halfway to the first uh, stretch goal as well. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Don't think we're going to hit it before we have to call it a uh, day and actually do meeting stuff. Unless, for the we're, next three minutes, everybody prepares at $9,000. We're a little shy at 25% on the Roll20 goal. Uh, now, the Roll20 goal seems to be almost as high as the printing goal. Is is there a method in madness behind this? Good question. For Roll20, some of you may have heard of uh, formerly known as Sigil Entertainment, which is now known as Metamorph, Metamorph if I say it right. Um, and they are uh, in the world of sort of Roll20 coding, they're the gold standard. They actually coded tons of stuff. I want to say the, a lot of the Savage World stuff. Um, I'm going to blank. Anyway, it's on their page. But so Metamorphic slash formerly known as Sigil is excellent at coding Roll20 adaptations. Uh, so we're actually commissioning them to do the DCC adaptation of Roll20. So what the funding pays for is commissioning awesome coders who can put this in and do an excellent, excellent version of it inside Roll20 with everything perfectly executed. Mm -hmm. So yes, so we're, we're hiring programmer types. That is, that's we're we're having professional people and mm -hmm. professional people, professional people, not like us, not like us, not like us. <laughs> so then, they write, they know, they know how big the spine is. <laughs> the, problem, the problem we found out is that when you publish your book with a whole bunch of tables, it's, that's really good when you're playing at the table, but if you have to put all those tables and make them integrated into Roll20, it takes time and time and money. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dr. Sparkles, any closing comments? <laughs> I don't know that I have any. I will say that, like Harley said, I got. I got involved, started getting involved in the movement games in DCC when Purple Planet first launched. It probably still is one of my favorite things that you ever published. That's cool. I love it. And it's a combination of Harley's work and Doug's work and everyone's input. I'm so happy to see it come back. 
I'm one of the lucky people that I still have my box set on the shelf, right? The chair shit. But to see it in this new form where everything's everything's collected and it's, we're gonna unlock more stretch goals and more stuff, I couldn't I couldn't be happier. Mm-hmm. Like, like a kid on Christmas. Like do, like a doctor on Christmas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so will there be a pledge level that includes everything as PDF only? Did we not do that? I thought we had. I thought we did that. The questions in the community. We don't have a VTT one. Okay. Right. We don't have the VTT one, but depending on how we did with this World 20 pledge, you know, we, we well, the may VTT, <laughs> we'll go back. We should have had a pledge level for PDF only for everything. So let me start writing this down. This is more than I can remember off the top of my head. Hold on. First of all, versions with no tome of invention number one. And then we wanted all PDF. And I feel like there's another one that I forgot about. All PDF level. If we forget and don't, so we'll do an update a little bit later today. If we forget and don't add it, uh, email us to remind us because I forgot. So, but I wrote the most recent two questions, so we'll remember no. those two. <laughs> we need we need to be careful though because the hobo nomicons only ever appear in print. There's no PDFs of the hobos. So can't you guys just like record yourselves describing it digitally? We can stand in front of a camera and I, I, camera. I will do that. I will there we go. Like, yeah. No, just use the original art for it, not the print product. That way it, it's like the preview of the real thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole dynamic becomes magical in a way that you guys can't understand. So <laughs> um, um, you know, just be careful even saying the name because it, it could destroy you it's not just a simple thing for fun it's, <laughs> it's so destroy your soul. okay but given that uh, my closing statement <laughs> kind of far, guys never trust a kip without halitosis <laughs> <laughs> just like the old player <laughs> harley would you like to make a closing statement the uh, just It's such a privilege to be with you guys and such a privilege to have this audience, you know, like they're the ones that make all this happen. So, so yeah, thank you for supporting Goodman games and can't wait to see you guys on the other side. Awesome. Jen, anything you'd like to add? Uh, Thanks everyone for your support and for letting us get this far to make this happen. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Thank you for making this successful. Thank you. Obviously, this is the first time we've tried uh, such a massive campaign. Um, you know, thank you for supporting everybody who's been part of the Purple Planet Board. Uh, it's a learning experience, so it's a little rough the first time out. But so thank you for sticking with us. And uh, you know, we have a good reputation of listening to your feedback and, and making things right. So uh, you know, so hopefully the next one that we launch with 120 third party but No, uh, the next one. You know, we're, we're learning. So thank you very much for your patience as, as we continue to grow. And we'll zoom out so Brendan and Brent and Kristen make sure to Here we go. Any closing comments from uh, Brendan, Brent, and Chris? We, we like Fantagraphics, actually. Uh, I like them too. I just don't. <laughs> we should sell me an empty slipcase. Thank you so much for tuning in and for supporting and uh, for being a part of the DCC community. You gotta love it. Cheers. Thanks. And I want a pledge level that's really, really high that Harley will come to my house and run a Purple Planet game. <laughs> that would work. Yeah. It's worked for other people. And I while he's wearing purple. And he has to purple. do the dishes and, yeah, and cook dinner. Okay, right. but you, Stir fry. Have, you have to translate all this to 5e, though. Sure. Okay. <laughs> that's a very different pledge level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We appreciate the support, and we will see you on the other side, as Harley said. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.